There's one quote in particular in the O Alone Way that hit me personally, uh, which I'd like to share with you guys. It said the Olones lived in a world swarming with power and magic. The creation of this magical world was shrouded in mystery. There was a fight between two great forces, good and evil, followed by an immense flood. Waters covered the entire earth, wiping out all traces of the previous worlds and leaving only two islands. One island, Mount Diablo, according to people of the San Francisco Bay Area, or Pico Blanco, according to those near present-day Monterey, stood a coyote, the only living thing in the world. One day, a coyote saw a feather floating on the water. As it reached the island, it turned into an eagle, which spread its wings and flew to join him. Later, coyote and eagle were joined by a hummingbird, and this trinity of animal gods undertook the creation of a new race of people. It turns out that Pico Blanco is right behind my house. This will become important in a second, and I will tell you why. There's another quote that I'd like to share with you from Empire of the Summer Moon that gave me this crazy idea. With puberty, too, came the trials that would transform them in the eyes of the tribe from boys to men. One of these was a vision quest, a version of which existed in most North American tribes. For Comanches, it began with a swim in a river or stream, a form of purification. The young man then ventured out to a lonely place where he would see no one, clad only in a breechcloth and moccasins. With him he carried a buffalo robe, a bone pipe, tobacco, fire-making materials, a night he smoked and prayed for power. He looked for signs in the animals and rocks and trees around him. He fasted. Usually this lasted four days and nights, but the idea was for the young brave to remain in place until he received a vision. After reading those two books, I thought that I would go on a vision quest. It doesn't really have much to do with Zap, but I guess Zap is about self-discovery, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and do it like the Comanches and go for four days and four nights. I'm not really sure how I feel about this. I'm a little nervous. It sounds pretty gnarly just staying in one spot for four days. So I know that this particular place that's way up on the mountains here where there's a big oak tree and it's kind of like a sacred power spot to me and also it is directly across from Pico Blanco which apparently is the epicenter of the Indian world where Coyote sat uh, during the Great Flood. To me this sounds like the ideal place to do this and also, um, if I leave tomorrow, it'll be the four longest days of the year since solstice is on Saturday. And also, Sunday is a full moon. So, it seems like the stars have aligned to me. I got the perfect place and the perfect time. To kind of mirror what they brought with them, I have assembled uh, what I'm going to bring with me. One jacket, one t-shirt, one hat, one pair of pants, one pair of socks, one pair of shoes, my backpack, a pillow, a sleeping bag, two gallons of water, so I'm also going to bring a hammock and rope and a knife to cut the rope. So I'm leaving at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning and we're going to see uh, if I have a vision or uh, if I lose my mind or maybe I just get really hungry or just exceptionally bored. Jeez, this has got to be a good sign. I came over the rise here and there's a giant almost full moon setting into a bank of fog over the ocean and it's really beautiful. Growing right next to my tree there's a giant elderberry that's covered in berries. They seem to be ripening up nicely. Morning, day one. I guess I'll check in. Well, today is Sunday, which was supposed to be the last day of my vision quest, day four. But um, as you can see, I'm back home. <laughs> the vision quest is uh, interesting. I wouldn't recommend it, really. I woke up in the middle of the night last night having a total claustrophobic freak out. I could not stay in my imaginary little domicile I'd made up for myself for one second longer. I feel like I got a lot out of it. It really makes you pay attention to any slight change in anything that's going on around you. The really simple things um, become quite entertaining. I'm so thankful for everything that we have. Being able to have food, being free. I feel horrible for people that are, you know, starving or or uh, imprisoned and I feel like my whole body is totally cramped and like locked up and, and uh, definitely like I feel like a very old person. I don't know, I'm just totally drained. I think I'll put up more reflections in my journal. If you're interested you can read about my thoughts. 
but still I did make it three days and three nights staying in uh, pretty much a 15 foot by 15 foot by 15 foot triangle and not eating anything which um, is certainly a unique experience I've never had before and I don't think I ever want to have it again. <laughs> this weird storm just came in which rarely happens in June and uh, it started dumping rain last night which would have been the last night of my vision quest so I guess it's fortunate I got the Got the hell out of there because um, I just had my sleeping bag in a hammock. I would have been absolutely soaked. After four days with no food, trying to get back could have been really, really, really miserable. Because it was pretty hard after three days.